Hey all, I'm your Komali ma'am. In this video, I'm going to teach you exemplar questions from solutions chapter. Let's start the session. Question number one, which of the following unit is useful in relating concentration of a solution with its vapor pressure? According to the Raoult's law, we have a formula P here, I'll write P naught minus PS by P naught is equal to mole fraction of a solute. So we can relate the lowering of vapor, relate to lowering of vapor pressure with the mole fraction. Let us see the option, mole fraction, parts per million, mass percentage, molality. Option one is the right answer. This is according to Raoult's law. Raoult's law. Let's see the next question. Question number two. On dissolving sugar in a water at room temperature, Solution feels cool to touch. Under which of the following case, dissolution of a sugar will be most rapid? Actually, what happens is uh, when we put some sugar in a water, then uh, it is feeling cool in touch in the sense it absorbs the moisture, it absorbs the heat. I'm sorry, it absorbs the heat from the surroundings which is an endothermic process, endothermic process. For endothermic process, hot condition is always favorable because we need to give the temperature from a outside. And that too, in options, if you see sugar in a cold water and sugar in a hot water is given, so hot water is favorable because it is an endothermic reaction. Coming to this, in this sugar crystals is given and powdered sugar is given. If you take the powdered sugar, Sugar, dissolution is a faster because surface area increases. As more is the surface area, more is the speed of the solubility dissolution. Option D is the correct answer. See the question number three. At equilibrium, the rate of dissolution of a solid solute in a liquid solvent is when we put some solid in a solvent, solid starts dissolving. See here, I give you an example. We have a substance I'm dissolving here. If the substance dissolves immediately, which means that that is a saturated solution, unsaturated solution unsaturated solution this explanation will helps you for next question also what is that i have one container and i put some substance in that and in that so solvent is already present it dissolves that is an unsaturated solution if suppose it is not dissolving, if I put some solid here in this solvent, it is not dissolving because you added almost so much solvent, sol solid, solute. That's why it is not dissolving. That type of solutions are called saturated, saturated. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, heat it. When I'm going to heat it, then whatever the solid is not dissolving, it dissolves in that. And if you cool it, whatever it is dissolved, it comes out as a crystals that is called as a super saturated solution. Here, what I want to tell you is super saturated, super saturated. Here, what I want to tell you is at equilibrium, rate of dissolution is equal to rate of a crystallization because how much amount of the solid that dissolves in a particular liquid which is equal to how much amount it is dissolved there it comes out as a crystals so at equilibrium rate of dissolution is equal to rate of crystallization option c is a correct answer see the question number four a beaker contains a substance a one beaker is having substance A. Precipitation of substance A takes place when we are adding a small amount of A in that solution. Just now I told you, if you if you have a container with a solvent, add substance A, it is dissolving, which means that it is a unsaturated solution. You are adding, adding, adding a, a particular time. It is not dissolving. Then it is a saturated solution. 
what you are doing is you are heated it and you just heat it it will be dissolvable in that and then cool it whatever it is dissolved it comes out as a crystals then it is a super saturated see saturated you may feel confusion with this with a saturated saturated precipitate won't forms because it reminds the whatever the solid you are adding it reminds as that particular substance itself but in the case of super saturated solution only it dissolves and upon upon heating again upon cooling it forms the crystals precipitation takes place those type of solutions are called super saturated solution option b is a correct answer question number 5 maximum amount of a solid solute that can be dissolved in a specific amount of a given solvent does not depends upon a pressure because pressure is a factor it, it, it can't show any of its effect on a solids and liquids because they are uncompressible incompressible they remains the same after after exerting a pressure option c is a correct answer see the question number 6 low concentration of oxygen in the people who are living at our higher altitudes in the oxygen levels are low in their blood and tissues that is just because of at high altitudes partial pressure of gases are low when partial pressures are low according to the partial pressure is low at a higher altitudes when lower is the pressure low is the solubility of a gas pressure is directly proportional to the solubility low is the pressure low is the solubility that's why uh, you know at high altitudes people feel some kind of headache uh, nausea uh, like an uh, vomiting sensation they feel that is because of low atmospheric pressure simply to say less is the pressure less is the solubility of a gases like an oxygen in our blood question number 7 considering the formation of formation breaking and strength of hydrogen bond predict which of the following mixture will show positive deviation from a raoul's law let us see methanol and acetone example if you see the methanol i am writing ch3 ch2 ch3 co ch3 oh right methanol and i am writing another methanol like this just i am writing like this to show you hydrogen bonding between two methanols like this hydrogen bonding is present whenever hydrogen bonding is present between the methanol molecules they cannot convert into vapor easily when you add an acetone this acetone molecule come and it breaks the bond between these methanol so this methanol converts into vapor very easily so this methanol converts into vapor easily that's why you know normally this is the this is a graph we will get according to the raoul's law when you draw the graph between a vapor pressure and mole fraction this is the case but for methanol and the acetone case we get a graph like this because this hydrogen bonding is broken in a solution after adding acetone that solution shows a more vapor pressure because alcohol easily converts into vapor due to the absence of hydrogen bonding after adding acetone so option a is a correct answer and not only this i want to tell you a super trick this will helps you when they given in a many examples like in the, the best trick to identify is whenever alcohol is present then directly you can mark alcohol and carbon disulfide and ccl4 conditions also will be there but in case of alcohol no need to see anything when alcohol is there directly you can you can opt a positive deviation from a raoul's law which means that they shows the more vapor pressure let's see the question number 8 colligative properties depends upon colligative properties are the properties which depends upon the number of solute particles this is the property i'm sorry see uh, colligative properties are the properties which depends upon number of a solute particles which are present in a solution 
uh, if you have some X substance and you have some Y substance, so it does not depends upon what is X and what is Y. It only depends upon X substance can produce how many ions and Y substance can produce how many ions. It depends upon only the number of solute particles. Then those properties we call it as an colligative properties. Option B is a correct answer. When you have any examination, these kind of short videos always will help you to score the best marks. See the next question, which of the following active solution should have an highest boiling point? Here, I want to tell you another excellent trick to save your time. If when you are increasing number of solute particles, if solute particles you are increasing, then because these questions we see more often we see these uh, related questions number of solute particles if you are increasing then osmotic pressure pi value increases depression in a freezing point increases elevation in a boiling this is elevation in boiling point depression in a freezing point increases and relate to lowering of vapor pressure increases only two boiling point also increases only two factors decreases this is important i want to tell you that is vapor pressure decreases freezing point decreases this is an excellent trick right in your notebooks and here in this question i want to tell you highest boiling point highest boiling point means more is the number of solute particle just check it out i value for NaOH it is two for Na2SO4 i value is three for ammonium nitrate, N value is a 2. And here, potassium nitrate, N value is 2. I value is a 2. More is the I value. More is the Van't Hoff factor. More is the number of solute particles. More is the boiling point. If any one of you don't know how to find an I value, I already made a Van't Hoff factor video. Go through that. It is also an excellent video which helps you. Now, uh, let me uh, teach you question number 10. The unit of ebullioscopic constant is, how to find the unit of this ebullioscopic constant? We have a formula, delta Tb is equal to Kb into molality. So Kb is an ebullioscopic constant, which is equal to Tb by molality. Tb is, delta Tb is an elevation in a boiling point and its uh, unit is a Kelvin divided by molality. So Kelvin by molality means Kelvin mo molality inverse. This is also correct. Or you can write in another way. Kelvin by molality unit is mole per kg. If it comes to the numerator, this is denominator, denominator. So if it comes to the numerator, Kelvin, Kelvin, mole, Kelvin. Mo Why I am writing here mole? Because it is in denominator. Kelvin mole inverse. If it is in denominator, denominator. So it, it comes to the numerator. K, kg mole inverse. See K, it comes to the numerator. Kg, if it comes to the numerator, mole inverse. Option A is the correct answer. Question number 11. In a comparison to a 0.01 molar solution of a glucose, the depression in a freezing point, what is happening to the depression in a freezing point of a solution? They, they, they're comparing two solutions. See, what are those two solutions, my dear students? One is a 0.01 molar glucose. Another one is 0.01 molar magnesium chloride. In a, both the cases, concentration is the same. Only the difference is one is a glucose, another one is a magnesium chloride. If you know how to find a I value, you can solve this question very easily. Glucose Van Hoff factor I value is a one because glucose is a non-electrolyte. Whereas a magnesium chloride I value is a three because it dissociates into Mg2 plus and 2 Cl minus. That's why more is, it is one, it is a three, almost a three times more. Three times more is the number of solute particles, then more is the depression in a freezing point, as I told you in a previous question. More is the number of solute particles, more is the Van't Hoff uh, Van Hoff factor, more is a depression in freezing point. Here, I value three times more. That's why depression in a freezing point is three times more. Now, let, let me explain you question number 12. An unripe mango placed in a concentrated solution 
to prepare mango pickle or some pickle that piece of mango shrivels why why the piece of mango shrivels uh, this you would have observed when your mom is preparing or grandmother is preparing the mango pickle where we observe that na uh, first we cut the mango mango into small pieces and we put in a salt water whenever we put in a salt water after few days all the water from the mango it comes into the salt water why it is like that that particular phenomena this is a salt water and this is your uh, mango piece then all the water from this mango piece comes out because inside the mango piece the solution is a dilute solution when compared to the salt water which is a concentrated solution we all know that solvent likes to flow from a dilute solution to the concentrated solution that phenomena we call it as an osmosis 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 where, where is there it lost water due to osmosis not a reverse osmosis it lost water due to osmosis because it is moving solution is moving solvent is moving from low concentration to high concentration option d is the correct answer let us see the question number 13 at a given temperature osmotic pressure of a concentrated solution of a substance what happens we all know the formula of osmotic pressure pi is equal to crt or icrt more is the concentration more is the concentration more is the osmotic pressure so if less is the concentration less is the osmotic pressure because osmotic pressure is here directly proportional to the concentration if it is a dilute solution less pressure because less concentration that's why always for an higher concentration osmotic pressure is more than a dilute solution this is a question number 13 these are the questions from solutions chapter thank you so much for watching this video